Ammo is crazy expensive and hard to find, and dry fire is life. I use the Mantis X10 to keep my handgun skills strong, and it makes dry practice fun and challenging. Check it out at the link below. Hey guys, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant, and this is your Manus Dry Fire Monday practice day. Uh, we got a lot of feedback with the glove section, and uh, a lot of you in the country are facing harsh winter conditions right now. We've had some of the hardest winters uh, for people in Texas, and they've been without power, and a lot of people were interested in clothing. Now, I live in the south, so I'm really not a cold weather expert, but I will say this, I teach in the mountains of, of North Georgia, and it rains and it's in the 30s, which is an incredibly dangerous condition because it's easy to get hypothermic. So when I dress, I use merino wool, I use a nice fleece layer, and then I have a shell that's wind and waterproof on. So it's a pretty good winter gear. Um, the water really makes a big difference. It's very uh, difficult. So some of the things that I use to be able to keep working on the range, I wanted to share with you guys, and maybe you can practice with your Manus dry fire. Now remember, this is going to get in the way. There's just no way about it, but it's gonna get in the way of the bad guy too. So we're still on an even playing field and a way we can make it a little bit more uh, slanted towards us is to get some practice in, okay? If it's warm enough, right now it's in the 20s. It's beautiful. You can see ice up on the ridge here. Um, it's a beautiful day, but it's in the 20s. Your hands get cold very quick and you lose feeling. Uh, I'm using the SKD uh, Pig Chuck Pressburg Assault Gloves. I really like them. Uh, they have good feeling in them. They've got a lot of nice little things. You should check them out. But the draw from here in appendix stays basically the same. I'm able to get to the gun and bring it out from this position. Let's check and make sure it's empty. I physically and visually verify it. You guys can look at that too. Tap rack right there put it back in the holster. So nothing really changes as long as the jacket's open. If I had a side holster, I'd be in the same position. I'd be drawing from the side holster. But as soon as we start zipping these layers up, things get a little more complicated. Um, one place that appendix shines is if you have a zipper, like this jacket has two zippers in it. So when I have two zippers like this, I can leave the bottom one pulled up slightly, like that. So that allows me still to be able to get to the gun and pull it out from that position. Now it's definitely not a second draw. I've got a lot more work to do. And then I need to be incredibly careful getting back in the holster. Those little tabs that uh, work on the skirt of the jacket and pull it tight, they need to go because they can get inside the trigger guard. Uh, this is a 511 jacket, so it's really set up for that. It's not a particularly fast draw, but it is what I'm able to do with gloves. Now, if it's just freezing outside and you've got to zip this all the way up, Here's what I suggest. And this is a very limited application. I'm not suggesting you do this all the time. There's two places where I use this, this gear and this drill. One is when I was in the MMA gym and I was by myself. Like all MMA gyms, it wasn't in the greatest neighborhood. So I would be wearing fight shorts, but I needed to stay armed. So this gun worked really well for that. And then for cold weather, this gun works extraordinarily well for pocket carry. And that's what we're going to talk about right now, is I have a pocket carry gun with me, okay? So I could simply keep my hands in my pocket. When it was time to draw, I can get the gun out. Now, what I'm using is a five-shot revolver here, uh, the fine Smith & Wesson 642, okay? And it's painted. The sights are painted, so I have better acquisition. That comes from Claude Warner. And then Claude has also made me a very fine uh, pocket holster, okay? And when I say very fine, he creates these on his own, he uses a placemat, and what it does is it protects the gun very well, so the trigger guard's protected, but more importantly, when I draw the gun, it stays in the pocket. That's one of the hard things with pocket holsters, is they simply don't stay in there. Then you end up drawing the gun and having to shuck the holster off. So this works very well for very cold weather, especially if I have thicker gloves on and I can't really feel what's going on. I simply can keep my hands in there. Make sure you practice this a lot with an empty gun because it does take a little uh, work. The zipper can get caught on the gun. That's why I prefer the revolver. It tends to slide out better than the semi-automatic. Uh, plus I have a very long trigger pull. The weight of the trigger doesn't matter as much as the feeling, because that's what I can feel is pressure in the gloves. So I prefer a double action trigger for this particular technique and for cold weather. Uh, I can't put my Manus on this gun, but I can put a part timer out and practice that. And what I make sure that I do is I make sure that the left hand knows exactly what it's going to do. So if it's in the other pocket, what it's going to do is it's going to come out as I draw the gun. Hands are going to come together, driving towards the target. I'm going to feel the pressure of the target or the trigger and then be able to shoot to the target. 
all right that pressure in the trigger is very helpful if you look from the side here i've got very big hands with gloves on so i really need to feel what's going on here as i press that trigger that gives me five good shots now things that we need to think about with revolvers okay if you have a revolver you certainly can do good work with it but it is a harder system to master You've got to practice that, that double action. If you've been a Glock shooter or striker fire shooter your whole life, you've got to practice that uh, trigger. You can do good work with it. Make sure the sights are visible. Mine's painted with uh, red and white, so it sits there and I can see them firmly. This tends to be about a 15-yard gun for me. I can make longer shots, but I'm not. it takes a lot of time to do that. So this is a very limited area where this gun serves me better than the one in appendix. And it, yours may vary. You may find something works better for you. All right, it's really cold out here. Uh, nose is running. I got a two-day RDS class teaching. I'm out here talking about revolvers because there are times where things fit in a better position for us and this is one of those times get some practice if you're ever going to carry in a in a pocket practice it it needs to be practiced so that it can be really easy for you to do and you understand all the downfalls everything in life is a compromise everything and we've got to find what compromises to our skills and our technical ability and the gear we're carrying and that way we can make a really good decision so in the winter time you don't have to go unarmed but you can actually have several different ways to do this. But once again, the investment is you practice more. You've got to practice these skills more and you've got to practice with multiple things. For some of you, it may be better just to do that. Uh, this jacket has a hole where you can reach through and try to draw the gun out, but I found it's just a trap. It just fouls the gun and I end up with like a big old mess in there. So what I tend to do is the pocket carry with the revolver. It was great for the gym too because I could put it inside of fight shorts in my holster and it didn't roll over. And those are the two places that I tend to carry it, and those two only. Um, so it serves a very particular purpose for me. I would always prefer to have my larger gun, but this gun does a very good job exactly for what it's designed for. All right, guys, get some practice. Practice like you're living. Practice in the cold weather that we're all experiencing right now. Don't let that ruin your self-image. Uh, if you are concerned that you can't do something, then you, the likelihood of it falling apart under stress is very high. So the way to overcome that is to practice. You're going to struggle a little bit, but skill is born from struggle, and you're going to get better. And you're going to measure what you're doing, you're going to refine it, and you're going to perform it. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, active self-protection extra. Thank you, Manus. I know the revolver doesn't quite fit. There is a way to stick it on the revolver, um, and it takes a little bit of work. And if that's important to you, get on there because you can do your, your holster draw analysis from the pocket. All right, guys, get to work. Let me know how you're doing. I look forward to your feedback.